Fang. The newest Fang from Baofeng. 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 The newest one is the UV-17R. Actually, I think there's one that's newer than that. The newest one in my possession is the UV-17R Baofeng. It's got some cool new features similar to the UV-13R that I did a review, uh, video review about earlier this year. And we're going to take a look at this right now. Thanks for joining the channel today. This is Ham Radio 2.0. We do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in Ham Radio. So, Baofangs are, I have heard them described as the radios that ham operators love to hate. <laughs> Which is kind of true. But this is the Baofang UV, UV-17R. I picked this up on Amazon. Okay, so I bought this radio. Bought it on Amazon along with two or three other models of radios, different different brands. And I grabbed them all on their Black Friday deal. So I was like, you know what? It's about time that I made a video with this thing. So let's go ahead and grab it. And that's what I've done. So I wanna we're gonna put this thing on the tiny SA meter right there, which is um which is a beautiful meter for um measuring harmonics and measuring clean signals of all kinds of radios. So this, uh, this particular one is made by a company called CC, S-E-E-S-I-I. -E -E -I. It's either Sessi or CC. I don't know which one it is. They sent me this meter and asked me to use it in my videos, and I told them, yes, I will. So check the link in the description below for that. But I wanted to go through and show you guys what the fang looked like first. So we can see the screen right here just fine. It's got the black background with the white text, which I think is a little bit easier to see myself. It's um, a little bit more pleasant to the eye and um you know just overall better to easier to see in the in the bright sunlight as well generally speaking i haven't tested this one in the bright sunlight so i'm not sure but uh, that's what it is the backlight goes off really quick it comes with this uh kenwood k-style connector uh earpiece adapter that was in the box with it a belt clip of course this funky looking desk charger two ports on the back and you know this just goes into regular wall plug there it comes with the the antenna this this antenna looks like a nagoya antenna this is kind of a neat looking antenna sma female on the base sma male on the top of the radio so we've got all of that right there around the side here it does have flashlight on the bottom of the radio and that's kind of bright that's a bright flashlight for uh for a radio it goes into strobe mode if you hit it a second time it turns off so being on the bottom like that with two strobes that's it's actually useful. I, th I find most of these flashlights in these radios, which I never grab my radio when I'm looking for a flashlight. I generally have a flashlight in my pocket anyway. But even if I grab the radio, most of them are pretty dim and not uh, not too useful. But that one's actually pretty useful. That's good. This one right here, that's the, uh, that's the you can see the flashlight symbol on that button there. This one here turns on the FM receive radio for broadcast radio. You turn that off again like that. That's the single PTT button right there. Okay, on this side, we've got the Kenwood uh, K-style connector. That's what would get, you would put uh, earpiece, the, the earpiece that comes with it, a hand mic, something like that. It sits in the cradle here with these fittings that go on the side of the radio like that. So it sits there just like that. That's fine. And then this battery is attached in a different way than what I've seen a Fang battery attached before. You got to have a screw, a screwdriver, or a coin, maybe a coin. A coin might work. Okay. And uh, the battery itself is 1,800 milliamp hours. And this one has, it has an FCC stamp on it. The serial number, UV-17R, made in China. Not much special about that. This does not have, I and I thought, I thought it would because the, the previous model that I reviewed has USB-C charging. This one does not have USB-C charging. There's no USB-C port on the battery itself. There's no USB-C port on the radio. I find that a little bit odd. I thought it would have USB-C charging, but it doesn't. Going over here and looking at some of the stats on the website, I actually think I must have gotten this from eBay instead of Amazon. I was thinking I got it on a Black Friday special, but I did buy some stuff on Black Friday special, but obviously this was not one of them. You can clearly see right here, it shows this one has USB-C charging in the back of the battery. That battery looks like the one I have. It's got the same two charging ports on the back and it's got the same screw down hold uh, hold down uh, flathead screw on the back and then it's got a USB-C port right above it so for whatever reason the one I got does not have USB-C charging this one on Amazon is $29 that's about what I paid for mine so I don't know what the difference is but in typical Baofeng fashion, fashion they're not all the same so Make sure you're gonna you're gonna probably want most of you are gonna probably want USB-C charging. So make sure 
if you and I'll put a link to this Amazon one down below. Twenty nine bucks right now at the time of this recording. There's an extra two dollars off, two dollar coupon on it. Just make sure you know what you're getting. I don't really care because I bought this radio to do a video with it, so it's 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 it doesn't really matter to me. But one of the good things about some of these newer radios, the UV13R that I reviewed earlier, has USB-C charging. This one here has 999 channels, hands-free uh, voice operation, walkie-talkies for adults with 771. Okay, 771. That's the antenna. It does have the 771 flexible antenna. This one here on Amazon's advertising the same the same thing here. Actually, the 771 might be the taller version. This might be the 701. But this the flexible antenna that's advertised on this radio right here. So this one comes with a long antenna. Mine didn't come with a long antenna. Some people like the long antenna and some people don't. If you're carrying it on your belt, the long antenna is more cumbersome. But, you know, it's again, just uh, know what you're getting and uh, know whatever you like. In fact, that one's got two. That's a much better buy, really. I don't remember why I bought this on eBay. I swear I bought this on Amazon, but I don't know. <laughs> I've got this one, and this is the one we're talking about today. It's got the FCC stamp on it. It's got all the stuff that we need, so I, I don't know. There, there we go. Okay, so let's take a look at the screen. We're going to go through the menus right here. If I press that right there, okay, so zero, zero in the screen right there, flashing at the top right. That's the menu, so it's going to go off. And then we go down, and it's, it goes to 45. So there's your firmware version. There's your handheld uh, hardware version. Frequency step, it will do 2.5 kilohertz steps. That's good. Transmit power is high and low. Dual power, not tri-power. Save, off, and one-to-one -one save, whatever that means. Vox is off. You can turn the Vox on. Uh, wide narrow, you can do narrow band FM with it. ABR, TDR, beep prompt, so you can turn the beep off. Timeout timer set to 120 seconds by default. Receive CTCSS tone, receive DCS tone, transmit CTCSS, transmit DCS, scan, and it'll scan CTCSS. So if your repeater is currently transmitting traffic, you can hit scan and it'll pick up the uh, CTCSS. Supposedly, it'll scan DCS as well. That's good. CDCSS save. I don't know what that is. Voice off, so you can turn the voice off and on. So I get a lot of comments sometimes from uh, blind hams asking uh, if certain radios have voice prompts. This one does. I don't know if you could hear it when we uh, turned it on a minute ago, but... Menu. Yeah, menu confirmed. It'll tell you when it's in VFO and, and uh, channel mode like that. So it's got a bunch of other menus like that, which you'd normally see. To go into... So frequency mode, you can see it's in VFO at bo both top and bottom band right now. Long press this one. It goes back into channel mode. Hit the blue button over on the right to switch between the top and the bottom band. Long press that. It'll go into channel mode. So you can be in channel mode on one band and frequency mode on the other band and uh, have it separate any way you want to. So that's that's pretty good. So what I want to do is put this thing on this SESI and see how well it does. Now, I do want to tell you, while I'm hooking all this up, Special shout out and special thanks to the Smoking Ape for kind of training me on the Tiny SA. The Tiny SA has been fun to use. I've used it on several radios at this point in time. This video specifically that you're watching right now is sponsored by PCB Way. You can find all kinds of printed circuit boards, CNC machine products, professional grade 3D printing products. You can find them all on PCBWay.com. They are running a Christmas special right now and a New Year's Day special, which is when this video is being recorded and posted. So you might be able to go out there and find some deals. But if you're watching this after the fact, those might be gone. But go out and check out PCBWay.com if you have any projects in mind, if you have any CNC machine printing or professional 3D grade printing you might want done. Check out the link in the description below. And if you do make a purchase over there, tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. What I've done so far is I've gone in here and I've already set the frequency and I've already looked at this. I know what this is going to do. So if we go to measure and harmonic, I'm going to set it to this, and I've already done this. I'm just doing it again for the camera. 146.520 megahertz. For some reason, this one asks you to do it twice. Megahertz, okay. And then we're going to go back into the main menu. Level. That's where we go. Level. EXT gain. We're going to do minus 40 times 1. And that's for 40 dB. So we're going to set both of those things right now. And then I'm going to key this thing up. And actually, I need to set it. I need to put it back on. So we're going to transmit on 146.520. We're going to hold it down for a few minutes and let it do its thing. I wonder if it's buzzing in the microphone right now. You guys let me know if it's buzzing in the microphone right now. So the one on the far left is the first harmonic. That's at 146.50. That's That one should be the highest one. 
The one to the right of it, this one right here that has a number, is the second harmonic, and that's currently at 293.04, and it's reading at like negative 10. So that's no good. It needs to be at negative 40 or lower. The third harmonic is around 433.56. It's at negative four, right at negative 40. And the fourth harmonic at 586.080 is at negative 30. So this is a dirty radio that is not producing the, the uh, clean transmissions that we would hope to see. It's a fang, and I'm sorry, that's just kind of the way fangs are. Not surprising. Does that mean you shouldn't use it? Eh. You know what? As I have said, uh, I've always said about Baofeng radios, they're good toss around, throw in your bag and come out to the field. And if you lose them, you don't really care type of radios. They're an excellent entry point. If you're a brand new ham and you don't know what to do, you don't want to go out and spend three or $400 on a new radio because you just got into the hobby. You're not really sure what you're going to do with it yet. A Baofeng is a really good entry point. But because of reasons that we just saw, you're going to want to upgrade this Baofeng at some point in time, because guess what? You don't want to be talking on a radio that's splattering on other frequencies for two reasons. Two reasons you want to you don't want to do that. Number one, that's just not being a good ham radio operator. Okay, you want to use clean equipment that works properly. You don't want to interfere with people and cause harmful interference. You can see that one was transmitting somewhere inside of the 440 megahertz band down in the lower portion of the band. I think it said 433, if I remember correctly. That's down in like the data or perhaps the um, digital voice D star DMR portion of the band. So digital voice portion of the band. A lot of hot spots are down on, on those frequencies. So you don't want to interfere with somebody next to you that might be trying to use a 440. Plus, and the second reason is that if you are trying to stay off the grid, if you're trying to not transmit very much and get people and let people know where you are, then if you're transmitting on four or five harmonics that can be heard, like this one was being, this, the third harmonic was right at negative 40, right where it should have been. Okay, just a little bit higher, it would have been out of scope. So it had three harmonic, well, two harmonics. It had the 146.5. That needs to be high. That needs to be the highest one, so that was good. And then the second and the fourth harmonic were higher than negative 40 uh, dB, which basically means that they could direction find you and find where you were listing on more frequencies than just the one you're talking on. And do you really want that? I don't know. I don't know. I guess it just depends on what you're trying to do. Put a comment below. Let me know if you have this radio and what you think about it. 73.